Hi, everyone, and welcome to our virtual pairing class. I'm Festival of Foods Mealtime Mentor, Casey, and I'm so excited to be joining you today in your kitchen from our Festival of Foods Test Kitchen. Um, today, we're working with Dairy Farmers of Wisconsin to pair some really great cheeses with some great drinks, of course, a really classic pairing. Um, if you have any questions that pop up during this class, please reach out to us at askfestivaldietitians.com. Um, all right, so let's get started. Like I said, we're working with Dairy Farmers of Wisconsin. Um, basically, they're a collection of brand, brands and products um, from all over the state of Wisconsin, uh, cheesemakers that produce some really great products. Um, so we, of course, love cheese here in Wisconsin, and what a great way to support our Wisconsin cheesemakers. Um, so if you're looking for those dairy farmers of Wisconsin cheeses, you can look for the proudly Wisconsin cheese label um, on the packages. Uh, so you know that you're getting one of those great cheeses. Um, so what I'll basically do during this class is I'll walk you through three different pairings. So I'll introduce the cheese, we can taste it, um, and then I'll talk about the cheese a little bit and then um, why we're pairing it with the drink that we chose. And then we'll also be pairing the last drink with a cocktail that we will make. It's called a shrub cocktail. So um, if you haven't already at this point, um, go ahead and prepare that shrub that's in the recipe. It'll need a little bit of time to sit. Um, so I, I have my shrub already prepared, but we'll get to that at the end of the class. So let's get started. Our first pairing today is a bread cheese. Um, we're using a bread cheese from Car Valley. Uh, basically a bread cheese, um, it has this really great um, kind of crust, light crust on it, which is where it gets its name, um, kind of like toasted bread. So what I've already done, and you can do this at this point, is I've gone through and just kind of cubed um, the cheese up. So this cheese has a really low acidity, which means that it doesn't melt when it gets hot, um, but it just gets really nice, soft and buttery, uh, super delicious, kind of like a cheese curd. It's actually cold or squeaky when it's cold. And then it just gets that really melty kind of soft, well, not really melty. It gets really soft and buttery um, when it's warmed up. So um, if you've got your cheese cubes ready, then join me over here at our skillet. Um, I'm gonna warm this up today on the skillet. Just get my cheese in the pan here. And we're just gonna kind of let that sit and let it get nice and warm. Um, so like I mentioned, it has this um, bread cheese, has low acidity, so it gets really nice and buttery when it's warm. Bread cheese is um, traditionally made from reindeer milk, but here in Wisconsin, um, the United States, but Wisconsin in particular, many cheesemakers have adapted to a cow's milk version, of course. Um, so it's traditionally called hustalipa, it starts with a J, you might see that other places, um, or bread cheese is a lot easier to say. Um, but yes, like I said, uh, it's a really great kind of warm, soft cheese when we warm it up. Um, I'm using the skillet today, but you could also pop it in the oven. You could pop it in the toaster oven. You could throw it on the grill. You could even microwave it for a few seconds like you do with cheese curds maybe to get those a little bit soft. Um, any way you'd like to kind of warm those up. All right, I can hear mine starting to sizzle here. I'll move those around a little bit. Mine is, I'm sure yours is too, starting to smell really great as well. The nice, nice warm cheesy flavor or smell going on. Um, these are really good if you want to enjoy, of course, just on your own, which is what we're gonna do today. Um, it's also good if you wanna serve it, serve it with like honey, jam, fruit, some kind of like sweetness to kind of offset that cheesy flavor would be great. It would also be really good on like a kebab. Again, it doesn't melt, so you don't really need to worry about it completely falling through if you're grilling your grill grapes. Um, it just gets really nice and soft on that kebab. It'd also be really great in like a really big salad. Lots of good veggies to kind of offset the melty, melty cheese. All right, mine are starting to look pretty soft here. So I'm actually gonna take mine off. If you wanna leave yours on for a little bit, go ahead. Um, I'm just gonna take this over to my cheese board over here and I'm just gonna put a couple on here so that I can try them. Oh, I love that, that crusty look that we have going on with some of them. All right, so um, another thing with this, bread cheese. Traditionally, it's actually served with coffee as a dipper. The coffee is what's used to really warm it up and make it soft. 
to each their own. In Wisconsin, of course, we really like to pair cheese with beer. So what we have today is we're pairing it with a breakfast stout to kind of get the best of both worlds there. Um, the breakfast stout that we have is made with oatmeal. It has some chocolate. It has some coffee. So a lot of those, you know, really great flavors for a stout, but also for breakfast. Um, and it, it goes really well with kind of that buttery cheese. It, they complement each other really well, almost like if you think about having like pancakes with butter on them and then the maple syrup, you have a really good kind of buttery flavor, but then you also have some sweetness too. So I'm gonna go ahead and try this and I encourage you to do the same. Mm. Like I said, the butteriness cuts or goes really well with kind of the really sweet stronger flavors with the coffee and the um, chocolate and the stout. Oh my gosh, I really like that one. <laughs> that's, a, that's a great pairing. Um, if you don't like a stout, if you wanna look for something different to pair this with, a bread cheese also goes really well with kind of on the opposite end of the spectrum, a crisp lager or a pilsner. Um, again, that beer just kind of cuts through that butteriness really well. Or if you prefer wine, it would go well with like a chilled white wine. Um, so play around with that and what you like with that bread cheese. All right, let's move on to our next pairing then. Um, our next cheese is going to be, it's called an Alpine. We have an Alpine cheddar crossover here. So what's an Alpine cheese? Today we have Sartori Montemore. Um, and Alpine cheese is kind of a more full-bodied mountain cheese. I'll go ahead and take it out of the package here. Um, it's got, it's typically like a semi-firm to hard cheese. It's got that rich nutty flavor. Um, it's, it, this one, like I said, is kind of a crossover. So it's kind of like a, a mix between a Parmesan and a cheddar, which are, happen to be two of my favorite cheeses. So um, this is a really good one. These cheeses melt really well. So that makes them really good for fondues or soups. Um, Gruyere is actually a type of, of Alpine cheese. So that's why you see that a lot with um, fondues. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and just, cut off a little piece of this. Go ahead and try some of this if you'd like. Um, you can see that it's got, it's, it's crumbly. It's like a little bit harder, um, but it's definitely still got that nice creaminess going on too. So today, um, what we're doing with this cheese, so um, this one in particular, this one from Sartori, um, sometimes it's got some really fun tropical fruit notes that come through. So what we're pairing this with then is an off dry Riesling today. Um, a Riesling is um, it, a type of wine that can really range from dry to sweet. So we have an off dry, which makes it of course on the drier end, not quite as sweet. Um, but the reason it pairs so well with this is sometimes you can get some of those um, fruity notes from the wine that um, it helps to bring out kind of those tropical flavors in the cheese. So I'm gonna go ahead and give this pairing a try too. Get a little cheese. It's definitely, like I said, a drier cheese, but it, once it hits your mouth, super creamy. Oh, that's really good. <clears throat> the wine is like, like I said, it's off dry, so it's not super sweet, but it definitely still has a little sweetness to it. It's a weighty wine, so it, it um, can really hold its own. I should, if you, if you will, against um, this kind of harder cheese. Um, so ooh, that's a really good pairing. Um, so with this one, um, if you don't like wine, um, you could pair it with, if you prefer beer, of course, um, like a stout or an IPA would stand up really well to this as well. Something that's not gonna disappear, you know, with, with kind of the really great flavor of this cheese um, that can hold up against it. But yes, this Riesling is a great pairing as well. All right, so then for our last pairing, um, our cheese that we're going with today is a blue cheese. It's a mild blue cheese. Um, we're going with Belgioso Creamy Gourd. Um, so this is just a wedge that we've got. I'm sure you've seen also the crumbles um, that we sell in our deli island. Um, but as you may know, blue cheese is made from um, cultures of the mold pen penicillin, which is what gives the cheese its kind of blue veiny spots throughout. Um, the cultures don't produce toxins though, which means that they're perfectly safe to eat. It sounds kind of funny to eat mold, but it's safe in this case. 
Um, these cheeses can be creamy, they can be crumbly, they can be kind of mild, they can kind of be the more pungent variety. And as you can see, they kind of weep a little bit. Um, they've got a little bit of liquid going on, which is fine, it's perfectly safe, but if you want to, you could wipe that with a paper towel before you ate it. These also soften pretty quickly at room temp, so you want to pull these out of the fridge um, pretty close to your serving time. Um, you could serve these, you know, with on a board with burgers, with salads, pretty typical. Um, throw them in a sauce or a dressing. Um, that's of course pretty traditional with blue cheese as well. Um, they pair super well in terms of drinks with something that's got some effervescence, some bubbles, and the reason for that is. Um, the blue cheese can be pretty creamy. It's got um, really good butter fat going on. So the, um, the bubbles that in your drink will help to kind of cut through that and keep your, your mouth nice and fresh for your next pairing. Um, so with this one today, if you wanna go ahead and start trying your blue cheese, um, definitely do that. Um, but like I mentioned, we are making a cocktail. We're making what's called a shrub cocktail. And today we're doing a raspberry shrub cocktail. Um, this actually works really well with this pairing because raspberries and blue cheese, um, the flavors in those are both driven by these aroma compounds called ketones. So they really complement each other well with this. So to get started with our shrub, like I mentioned, um, hopefully you already created, you already made your shrub. Basically what that is, or started it, I should say. Um, I've just taken a cup of raspberries and mixed it with a cup of sugar. And I let that sit for about two days, anywhere between eight and 48 hours. Uh, so I've let that sit and then I put the mixture through a fine mesh sieve to really get all that syrup out of there. So basically what this is right now is um, a raspberry syrup. And then you have the solids that you can discard or use for jam. Um, definitely uh, don't toss those if you like raspberries. So um, to this shrub or the start of the shrub, I should say the syrup here then, I'm gonna add a cup of red wine vinegar really any vinegar that you prefer works here. That's what a shrub is. It's um, fruit, sugar, and vinegar. Those are kind of the basic elements of it. And it kind of stems from, uh, you know, years and years ago when people used to preserve fruit with vinegar when refrigeration wasn't really a thing. You might hear them called drinking vinegars as well. Um, but I'm using red wine vinegar. You could use like an apple cider vinegar would also be good for something that you're drinking. Um, if you want, you can definitely just use a regular white distilled. It might have a little bit harsher flavor, but if you really like tart things, that would be a good option as well. This red vine really goes well with this. Plus it kind of helps the color to keep that really nice red pink, which I like in this drink. Okay, so I've got this all mixed up here. So now we're ready to start building our drink. So I'm going to take my cocktail shaker here. I'm gonna add some ice. And then to this, I'm going to add two ounces of the shrub. If you're making this um, a mocktail instead of a cocktail, you actually don't need to do the shaking stuff. You could if you wanted to, but um, I would recommend using a little bit more shrub just because you're leaving out some of the other flavor from the alcohol. But the shrub is definitely something that you can adjust to your taste. Of course, it's got a little bit of tang to it. Try it before you put it in your drink to see how you like it and um, how strong you might like it. Um, but yeah, that can definitely be adjusted. All right, so we've got our two ounces of um, raspberry shrub. Let's see. Then I'm gonna add four ounces here of vodka. You could also try this with other types of liquor if you prefer. I tried it with gin and that was really good as well. So if you're a gin fan, try that. Um, so yeah, that's all we add to the shaker. So I'm gonna get my cap on here and just give this a little shake. All right, and then I've got my glass here filled with ice. So I'm just gonna strain some of this mixture out in here. This makes about two drinks, depending on how thirsty you are. And then I'm just gonna top this with some club soda. So like I mentioned before, if you're making a mocktail, um, you can just add the shrub straight to your glass um, and then just top that with club soda. You could also top with 
um, a sparkling water. You could do a ginger beer, a flavored seltzer if you prefer, just anything that really has those nice uh, bubbles, like I mentioned. And then we're just gonna garnish this with a couple of raspberries and a little bit of mint to give it a really nice fresh flavor along with those raspberries. So let's give this tasting a try, this pairing. Take a little blue cheese. Ooh, look how creamy that is. You know, I'm the only one here. I'm actually just gonna eat this off of the knife because it's a little too creamy to grab with my fingers. So I'll try a little of the cheese. Oh, super creamy, oh my gosh. And then take a sip of this. The bubbles, like I said, really help to clear that. I also really love the combination of the really tart flavor from that wine. I think it goes well with um, kind of the aroma of the cheese, the, you know, it's, it's, it can be a pun, more pungent cheese than maybe other cheeses. So like I mentioned before with the, um, with the Alpine cheese, you wanna have a drink that can stand up to it. That's not gonna be buried with it. And I think the vinegar in this shrub cocktail really helps it to really hold its own with this pairing. All right, well, those are our pairings today. Um, thank you so much for joining. We hope you had fun and learned a few things along the way. Again, if you have any questions as you're watching this class um, or any other questions for us, please reach out to us at askfestivaldietitians.com. A big thanks again to Dairy Farmers of Wisconsin for working with us today. If you're interested in learning more about cheese and different pairings, visit wisconsincheese.com. Um, also be sure to check out more recipes from us, the Mealtime Mentors at, at, at festfoods.com slash meals and follow Fest Foods on Facebook and Instagram to be the first to hear about our upcoming virtual cooking classes and pairing classes. We'll see you next time.